Asia hides a biological mystery that defies explanation. Right through Indonesia runs an invisible border that animals simply refuse to cross. It is an ancient line that is both real and not real. This invisible barrier has kept two worlds apart for millions of years. On one side you'll find animals typical of Asia. Tigers, elephants, rhinos and various species of monkeys cross only a few miles to the other side and they completely vanish, replaced by marsupials, cockatoos and giant lizards. But in this case you have islands that are right next to each other and the animals have no relationship to one another at all. They are completely different. This made no sense. Why would God draw a boundary through these islands? It feels like an invisible wall divides Asia's wildlife in two. But why would animals simply refuse to cross an artificial line for no apparent reason? The answer lies in a forgotten genius who discovered all of this long before modern science could even explain it. To understand the big picture, we need to look at a field of study called biogeography. Evolutionary biogeography is the study of the distribution of plants and animals across the world. And it's very important because it provides key evidence that evolutionary change has taken place. The world's most famous biogeographer, the one you have definitely heard of, is Charles Darwin. But he isn't the hero of the story. On the contrary, some believe he might not even be the sole owner of the ideas he is most famous for. Now before Darwin published his groundbreaking theories, another man had already uncovered the same. A man who spent years exploring jungles, charting islands and risking his life to understand the natural world. Yet history barely remembers him. His name was Alfred Russell Wallace. And compared to the great naturalists and explorers of his time, he was a bit of an underdog. He was a collector. He collected birds and insects and sold them in the collector's markets in London. In 1854, he did what has now become a cliché for many millennials. He left everything behind in Europe to travel through Southeast Asia. But back then, without a university degree or wealthy patrons, that was not a very common thing to do. He embarked on what would become an eight-year sailing expedition across the Malay archipelago, an area we now know as modern-day Indonesia. As a Westerner in the 1850s, imagine how surreal it must have felt to discover all of those exotic places. Imagine setting foot on Java Island's ancient volcanoes for the very first time, with slopes draped in forests and hilltops dotted with crater lakes that glowed in unusual colors. In the deep valleys between, you would find countless waterfalls that thundered through volcanic gorges their spray creating a perpetual mist with rainbows reflecting in the tropical light. It must have felt like entering a different planet. In Borneo, rainforests stretched endlessly beyond the shorelines with vegetation clinging to every available surface, from forest floor to the highest branches. The air must have been thick with the scent of damp earth salt and distant rain. Each island felt like a world of its own, shaped by isolation and forces he had yet to understand. In Bali, emerald rice terraces carved impossible geometries into mountainsides where every elevation hosted its own unique world of plants. Here the morning mist created an otherworldly atmosphere where time seemed to stand still. Out at sea, coral reefs shimmered beneath crystal waters, their colors so vivid they seemed almost artificial. These waters held their own mysteries. Fish species that defied classification, coral formations that had never been mapped. Amid this raw and unfiltered nature, Wallace would make observations that would change everything science thought they knew about the natural world. The numbers from his journey are staggering. 
He documented and categorized over 125,000 specimens, including more than 83,000 beetles and thousands of undescribed species. I'm a huge admirer of Wallace for many reasons. He was probably the greatest collector of natural history specimens ever. In the process, he stumbled upon something that defied explanation, an invisible border in the middle of Indonesia, a discovery that would later be known as the Wallace Line, a natural phenomenon that separates two completely different worlds more effectively than any physical barrier ever could, and the explanation was peculiar, to say the least. As Wallace sailed from Lombok to Bali, he witnessed a complete shift in wildlife within a single day's journey. The islands looked nearly identical, yet their animals couldn't be more different. He knew geological forces had to be responsible, but couldn't quite figure it out. You see, at the time, most naturalists believed species were fixed in place the way the Bible described it, basically. An earth had been created in seven days. So he had to piece together the puzzle himself with very, very limited information. He hypothesized that the last ice age might have been responsible. During that era, massive glaciers covered most of the northern hemisphere. These colossal sheets of ice, some over a mile thick, locked up enormous amounts of the planet's water. As a result, sea levels worldwide were up to 120 meters lower than they are today. Wallace realized that this dramatic difference would have completely transformed the geography of the entire world. With sea levels so much lower, many islands that are separated today would have been connected by land bridges. The end of the Ice Age would explain why these western islands share so many animal species with the Asian mainland. All these coastlines look different. They were bigger. They were bigger. Well, when was the, where the oceans drained? During the Ice Age. <laughs> there they were in Asia. They get to that boundary, they cross over. When the ice caps melted, rising seas cut them off, isolating species on their respective islands. But this was just one theory and ultimately one piece of the puzzle. The more he observed, the more questions emerged. If land bridges explained how tigers and rhinos reached islands without swimming, then why did birds refuse to fly across a narrow strait? It didn't quite add up. What invisible force had divided life so perfectly? The real answer wouldn't be uncovered for another century. But before that, he would make another groundbreaking discovery. One that history would credit to somebody else. Before we wrap up the story, I wanted to get something off my chest. As an independent filmmaker, creating videos like this takes an incredible amount of time, not to mention the research to craft a story like this. That's why I want to thank today's sponsor, Motion Array, for making it all happen. As a creator, I'm constantly looking for ways to elevate my videos without spending days creating all of the tiny things from scratch. Motion Array has been a game changer for me. They are a licensing platform for anyone who creates videos for the internet. A feature that I use all of the time is their AI voiceover tool. I always start my video drafts by creating a motion array voiceover track first. Doesn't have to be the final product, but it helps me to sketch out my entire video, determine the length and plan all of the visuals. To enhance my video, I frequently use the assets from Motionary, which offers a huge library of templates, stock footage, and any editing asset that you can dream of. If you want to save time while making your work look more professional, you are totally missing out if you are not using Motionary in 2025 and beyond. Plans are also very affordable, start at less than 25 bucks. You can not only download once, but unlimited amounts of assets. In case all of this hasn't convinced you, I got something for you. You see this? Those are 50 US dollar bills, and unfortunately, I don't get to keep any of them, but Motion Array will give those away for free to anyone who signs up for an annual plan in form of a 50 US dollar discount, which makes everything even more affordable, which is amazing. You should definitely consider a Motion Array plan. And with that said, back to our main story. There is another layer to this and one that is even crazier. 
During his travels, Wallace uncovered another revolutionary idea, one that would eventually make someone else famous. Darwin's evolution by natural selection was the greatest idea anybody ever had. You see, scientists at the time believed that species were fixed and unchanging, basically. But Wallace's observations suggested otherwise. He realized that species evolved through natural selection shaped by their environments. Special creation couldn't explain the line, but Wallace's earlier law could, that species come from pre-existing nearby species. The invisible line he discovered was proof that isolation leads to different evolutionary paths, basically. So he did what probably most of us would have done, and he wrote to Charles Darwin, the most respected naturalist at the time, and just asked him for advice. What Wallace didn't know, however, was that Darwin had been developing the exact same theory for over 20 years. Now, when Darwin received Wallace's letter, he was shocked because basically his life's work had been independently discovered by someone else, which is pretty insane if you think about it. So technically, both of them came to the same conclusion. However, in the world of science, if two researchers make the same discovery, then typically the one who makes the first formal publication is seen as the legitimate owner of the theory. So Darwin rushed to publish his findings in his most famous work, called the origin of species. And while Wallace's contribution was originally acknowledged, it became gradually overshadowed by Darwin, who was a wealthier and already famous man with better scientific connections. So Wallace basically became a footnote in history, despite introducing concepts like survival of the fittest, a term Darwin would later adopt. Yeah, life is not always fair, but back to the question why animals won't cross the line. Like we have assembled most of the puzzle, but one crucial piece is still missing. He died in 1913, never knowing the true explanations for his greatest discovery. Because it would take another 50 years before scientists finally found the missing piece that would transform our understanding of the planet itself. In the 1960s, geologists proposed something that once seemed completely impossible the Earth's continents actually move, a theory which is known as continental drift. And it paved the way for another modern theory called plate tectonics later on. Now, long story short, scientists believe that millions of years ago, all of the land on Earth used to be one giant supercontinent called Pangaea. But over time, it broke apart and drifted into the continents we know today. Now, you can probably guess where I'm getting at. For millions of years, Australia had been drifting northwards and basically carried those creatures that evolved in isolation towards Asia. Now, as the Earth's tectonic plates shift, so do the world's countries. Slowly but surely, Australia is drifting. The country is moving northwards by approximately seven centimeters per year. It's the planet's fastest evolving continental plate. That's why animals still won't cross the line to this day, because in a way, they're still living on separate continents, trapped by a division that was set in motion millions of years ago. But the story doesn't end there, because when two worlds collided, they created something even more fascinating, a very unique collision zone. The region consists of islands that were never connected to either continent. They emerged from the sea through volcanic activity as the Australian plate pushed against the Asian. These islands are known as Wallacea and they are strikingly different from the rest of Indonesia. The most famous one of them is Komodo, a rugged island covered in mountains and dry vegetation. It's an isolated world where nature followed its own path, untouched for millions of years. Komodo is home to the world's largest and deadliest lizard. The Komodo dragon evolved in total isolation. Cut off from the mainland, they grew to massive proportions, a perfect example of how Wallace's line shaped evolution in ways nobody expected. From above, you can see why this place is so unique and how the deep waters of the Flores Sea create some of the most diverse marine ecosystems on the planet. 
I know Wallace might have been the underdog during his lifetime, but today scientists recognize Wallacea as one of the world's most important biodiversity hotspots. His theory wasn't just correct, it was revolutionary. And while Darwin got all of the fame, Wallace's name lives on in this extraordinary region where two worlds meet, perhaps the most fitting legacy for a naturalist who saw patterns that everybody else missed. Indonesia in general is super unique and fascinating because so many tectonic plates meet, creating some of the most intense geological activity on the planet. From above, this collision zone reveals itself in dramatic fashion. You can trace the paths of ancient lava that have carved valleys through the rock and created bizarre formations. The volcanic soil, enriched over millennia with minerals from the Earth's core, supports vegetation of extraordinary vibrancy, emerald forests that seem to glow against the dark volcanic backdrop. Black sand beaches stretch along coastlines where lava has met the sea, creating shorelines that appear almost alien under the tropical sun. The region is home to over 130 active volcanoes, part of the infamous ring of fire that circles the Pacific. If you're interested in learning more about this fascinating topic, I made an entire video dedicated to volcanoes in Indonesia and beyond, so you definitely gotta check out this video right here. And if you enjoyed this one, I would appreciate if you could leave a like on the video, so it helps with the algorithm. Either way, thank you so much for watching, guys. You are really, really awesome, and I will see you in the next video.